good morning. Guess what? It's Monday, December 14th. I am going to continue with my Christmas baking today because I need to get it done. The special day is I'm not gonna wait for anybody, so we need to get that done. I hope that you're busy working on your Christmas cookies and all your family treasured favorites, um, just like I am. Today, let's see, I finished up all the bullseye cookies, and today I'm gonna try and get done the, well, let me show you the ingredients, see if you can take a guess. Here are most of the ingredients. I think only one thing is missing. Can you tell what we're making? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you guess the peanut butter cookies, you know, the, uh, what do they call those? The kiss cookies or something? Um, oh, I mean, who doesn't have those on their cookie tray? They are so delicious. Uh, in our family, yes, we use the regular Hershey Kiss Kisses um, as well. This year, and a few years back, I think, several several years back, I believe, I decided to use the Christmas Star Cookies. I got this recipe, oh gosh, off of Fleet Farm, fleetfarm.com, which I go to every once in a while because they have some kind of unique things. And I saw it there and I saw this wonderful recipe and I thought, well, that would be really cool, especially at Christmas time. Also on the back, of the Brock's bag of the Christmas stars. You can see what they, how cute they look, and they look just like that. Uh, they have a wonderful recipe on the back that you can just follow, and it's very similar to um, whatever peanut butter blossom Hershey Kiss cookie recipe that you have. Uh, I do have my mother-in-law's recipe, and I do have um, a dear friend of mine's recipe, uh, which I'm gonna be using today. And so I put half I use half with the Brock's Star chocolate, milk chocolate stars. And the other half, because my son is just an incredible fan <laughs> of the Reese peanut butter cups, I use the other half with these. So you can see in my lineup today for these uh, peanut butter kiss cookies, um, there are no kisses, none, okay? But you'll see how beautiful they are when I'm done. They're lovely. They're very delicious. And I'm gonna go ahead and give you this recipe, um, just kind of one by one. Let me just go ahead and put the um, recipe card down in front of you so you can take a look. Can you see it there? Let me just see. Is that any better right there? I know the lights are terrible sometimes. There, is that any good for you? And you know how they go. Let's see, is there anything written on the back? Oh yeah, there is, okay. Yep. 10 to 12 minutes, 375, top each cookie with a kiss. But you don't have to do that like I just, like I just showed you. All right. Here we go. All right. All right, let's get started. I was just starting to get my sugar ready to roll the um, peanut butter balls in. Um, and I just wanted to quick show you the sugar that I use um, because it's not pure white sugar. So it's kind of like unbleached sugar, like an unbleached flour. That's how I think of it anyway. I think it may be just a little bit better for us. Who knows? I'm probably just fooling myself, but this is the sugar that I buy. And I get it from Aldi. And it's a little bit, well, it's a lot more expensive probably than the um, little bag of white sugar. Well, maybe not a lot, but a little bit. 
a little bit. You get a whole lot more in your bag. Let's see. I think you get five pounds or four pounds. I can't think of how much you get of white sugar. Well, anyway, this is six pounds for like three something, 327, I wanna say. All right, and it's really nice. It's very nice. And we are going to roll the um, peanut, butter, peanut butter balls in that. Okay, so it's not the stark white, but it's not gonna make any difference at all. Uh, the peanut butter ball is kind of a brownish color anyway. So, uh, and there was a little bit of left leftover white on the bottom there that kind of mixed in here. So, oh, and it has such a nice sprinkles, uh, sparkle to it. I'm sure you probably can't see that, but um, under the lights here, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's gonna be really nice. And also while I'm talking about this sugar for dusting or for rolling in, don't start with so much sugar that when you're done rolling your cookies, you've got all this sugar left over. Unless you make something with a peanut butter flavor, like a peanut butter bar or more peanut butter cookies or a M&M &M cookie, something like that, you can't really use it. I mean, you really can't. Um, I mean, I guess you could save it. Maybe something would come up that you could use it for. I'm not sure that I would throw it away, especially if it was a whole bunch, but just start with a little bit and you can always add more to it. Okay, tip for the day. are going in a preheated 375 degree oven for let's see 12 10 10 to 12 minutes I'm gonna go ahead and set mine on 12 all right here's our our trays are out and they, they've just come out so they're very very warm uh, I'm gonna go ahead with this tray and use our stars our Brock's stars right and these are gonna go right in just push them right down hold for a second and these are going to actually go back into the oven for two minutes. waiting kind of in between cookies I am going to make this microwave fudge I'm sure you've seen it it's everywhere but it's also very very delicious okay there's the recipe and you can just watch and um, I'll show you how it's done all right first of all I want to make sure that I have everything that I need you need three cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips I have some some of those itty bitty ones that I used earlier in another cookie, I had some of those left, so I went ahead and started with that. So that bag has now been thrown away. And I also had the larger ones, I had that. So this is a total of three cups, and this is the bowl that we'll be putting in the microwave in small, small increments of like one minute, and then 30 seconds, just to make sure that we don't overdo it. You also need, with your chips, a half a stick of butter. That's a quarter cup of butter. I'm gonna also put in one teaspoon of vanilla. My pan is all ready to go. All right, that's a fudge pan. Yep, and it's all lined. I didn't spray anything. I don't think you really need to, but do do go put parchment in there or uh, foil and make sure that they're, the sides 
are long enough so that you can pull it right out when it's nice and cold and put it on a cutting board and just have a good time just cutting it. That's, that's fun to me. I, I enjoy that. <laughs> also, at this time, you need to decide what you want to put in your fudge. Once it comes out, it's nice and soft. That's when you want to add in your add-ins. All right, I am going to chop up some walnuts because I have them and why not? Oh, there's nothing better than walnuts or pecans or cashews or something in a nice creamy delicious fudge. So I'm gonna be adding that and because I have them also, I'm gonna add in some marshmallows because I know my family loves marshmallows, okay? And then on top of what I think I might do is add some sprinkles. I have these cute little, um, holiday Christmas sprinkles that I might just add on top. And then I have one of these sweet little Christmas um, sprinkles as well. I kind of like, I like those right there. I've always liked those as sprinkles. So we'll see, we'll see which ones I want to add um, and, and not add. All right, let's get started on our fudge. Every Christmas platter is just not complete without a little bit of fudge. I even put this in the microwave because I'm gonna have to be very um, cautious while I'm at the microwave and I can't have anything take me away from that because it's really important. I'm gonna go ahead and put out all the things that I want to add to my fudge as soon as it comes out and is ready, okay? So we'll set it aside for just a moment. It's not going in quite yet. Uh, I did have, I did say that I wanted to add some nuts to it. So let's get them ready. All right, this is after one minute and 30 seconds exactly in my microwave. It is creamy and smooth. The butter is all melted. I'm gonna go ahead and add my vanilla. I got it all ready here. I strongly suggest that. When you're baking and you need to do things like that, you know, it moves quick. So have everything ready. On the ready, like your pan already to take this when it's done. All right. And now your add-ins. Remember, we're gonna add these chopped walnuts. Yum. And if you wanna add, I don't know if I said this before or not, pecans, I think I may have. Uh, I love pecans or pecans. You can add those. Um, I was thinking, if I had them, some pretzels, crushed up pretzels, not super duper fine, but just enough, a little bit of salt. A little bit of a salty flavor. And if I had some of that flake salt, some of that flake sea salt, oh yeah, I would sprinkle that ever so lightly over the top of my fudge. Oh, can you even imagine? All right, that's in there. And now, here we go with our little marshmallows. That's not enough. And that should be enough, you think? Well, let's give it a try. Okay. Hmm? Yummy, love marshmallows. All right, toss it all around. I wonder if I could have put more walnuts in here, darn it. Oh, I don't know. Look at that, can you see how beautiful that is? It really does make a wonderful creamy and smooth fudge. So if you have to have a fudge on your Christmas cookie platter, this is the one to use. I love it, have loved it for years. Okay, there we go. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful fudge. Mm-hmm, it's really good. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go ahead now and transfer it and transfer it right into our 
brownie pan. It's like a nine by nine, I believe this is. If you have an eight by eight, that's fine too. All right, in it goes. You know, sometimes when I'm filming like this and I'm trying to keep my eyes focused down here on what I'm doing, and then I'm, I have to look up at the camera and make sure I'm getting it because that would be just like awful. Went to all that trouble and you didn't even get it for your friends. Who watch? All right, so we're gonna spread it around really nicely in the corners. Over here. Over here. Do make sure it's nice and level and smooth. And just take a quick peek at the um, add-ins that you have put in there. Make sure they're nice and even, that there's not a big bite of um, something that has like all the walnuts and all the marshmallows, but just make sure. You know, your, your baking eye can do that. Okay, oh. That's beautiful. We're going to get started on those Mexican bridal cakes. In the mixer, I have the uh, two cups of flour, and right now I'm going to add one and a half uh, sticks of butter, nice and soft. I just went ahead and kind of cut them up a little bit. Um, if they're real soft, you really don't need to do that. All right, that's looking really, really, really good. All right, then now I'm going to take my five tablespoons of powdered sugar. I'm gonna put it right in. That's it, five tablespoons of powdered sugar. Unfortunately, no, these are not diet cookies. It might seem that way because that's only five tablespoons of powdered sugar. However, when they come out of the oven, pretty warm, you will be rolling them in even more powdered sugar. And if you want, once you're letting them rest a little bit with that addition of powdered sugar, you can uh, roll them one more time just to make sure that they have a beautiful coating of powdered sugar. That's what I do. But you do you. All right, so now I'm going to add a cup of finely chopped walnuts. And the next thing we're going to add is one quarter cup. That's it. One quarter cup of chocolate chips. Yes, I have made these with the regular size chocolate chip cookie type chocolate chips, but I think the best to use for this particular cookie, because they're small, are these itty bitty tiny chocolate chips. They are just so cute and they work so, so, whoops, so perfectly for this recipe. So in they go. Hey, if you wanted to add just a tad bit more, I'm not telling. Right. Oh, this is looking wonderful. It is a little bit of a dry mixture, but that's okay. All right, and now I need one teaspoon of water and one teaspoon of vanilla going in. beautiful yep see if you squeeze it together really tightly like that you have a nice ball like that or a nice blob we're gonna make it into a ball in just a second okay I am getting ready to roll these out they need to be like a ball like a golf ball but just a little bit smaller okay and I'll put them on the pan here where you can see them you can put it right and then I'm gonna flatten it down just enough, 
just like that. That's exactly the way it should look. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill the pan. Thank you. 